practically speaking, you probably have to compose it here. Yeah. Welcome, everybody. Yeah, we're happy to have uh, Dave Shaw much of your feet from uh, IBS uh, South Korea. And uh, so he'd be, I mean, yeah, so before uh, he's a postdoc there, but before uh, he joined that place, he did his PhD from uh, CMU with uh, Toshin Lu. And uh, before that, he was at the Chennai Mathematical Institute. So, welcome. Uh, he'll be speaking today on uh, mixing time. Thank you very much for the uh, introduction. I'm having so a lot of some people still need to get there. Yeah, just having a lovely time in there. It's nice to have Indian food after It's good. I like it, but still, I miss Indian food. For the record, it's on record. I will still uh, start with a basic introduction. So expanders is a type of you know highly connected graphs, which is very useful in like various uh, fields, including math and computer science. So there are many different ways to actually define expanders, and they have some relations uh, between them. So there are main three ways to define it. So as to is like you know, combinatorial or like geometry. There is another way to do it, like probabilistic way, like the random walk. The third way is like some algebraic way. You look at the uh, adjacency matrix or the same matrix. Okay, let me. Uh, so mainly I will be talking about relationships between this one and two. So let me briefly uh, just say what uh, these are. So here uh, the combinatorial type definition is basically whenever you have a subset uh, of vertex set A, you have a graph and the subset. Then you have like you know enough number of edges coming out of it. This is like a com a complement. So, uh, so basically, formally, you can just say that this quantity minimum of the number of edges between A and the complement of A divided by the volume of A, this thing is uh, large. The A is subset of vertex set and size of A is the This is the set positive. And uh, volume really I should define. So this volume of A is nothing but just a degree sum. So uh, this uh, quantity is known as Chigar constant. Um, so this is uh, this is how um, like you, we can define expander. And in the probabilistic way, what you do is you look at the random walk uh, on the underlying graph, the standard random walk you can consider and check what is the mixing time of that. So I'm going to actually uh, like talk a lot about this point, uh, like uh, how, you know, like, you know, this mixing time is related to like this other notion. So uh, let me just uh, uh, skip details uh, for now, but you will see it uh, like maybe in 10 minutes. And in algebraically, what you do is you just look at the uh, adjacency matrix of the graph. Uh, 
which is the matrix or the Laplacian matrix. Yeah, uh, you have a spectral graph. If, you, if there is a good spectral graph, then the graph is uh, expanded. Okay. I'm not going to uh, go into any details. Um, for, uh, so, so you defined, you made the definition of uh, E A B A as volume. Mm -hmm. So how is that? Uh, so this has to be something for the graph to be expanded, or so I, I, I just missed it. So how does that make the definition mean for graph to be expanded? So you, you have a graph and uh, the graph satisfies. So okay, maybe I, I should say that uh, uh, I, I'm not sure why you are exactly confused, but like uh, maybe this is positive means like you know oh, this doesn't depend on n. Okay, next you. positive. This doesn't depend on n this way. Like as n tends to infinity, this is like you know oh, like, that's what you think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, yeah. Ah, okay. sorry about that. So this is related to some isoperimetric inequality type of uh, thing like this. This thing in geometry looks like some isoperimetric inequality. So like that's why people call it like some uh, like a distant geometry type. Yeah. So, are you sure? I'm sorry? sorry are you sure? no, this is just a simple graph. So E A comma B A is basically the number of this. So this is, isn't it always positive? It is always the limit, I guess, yeah. Exactly. As I said, uh, that this number, this positive number does not depend on pain. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Mm -hmm. Let me uh, let's look at some examples. I think which so an obvious non-interesting example is complete graph. We can complete graph, of course, it satisfies the first property you can see, but like it has like you know many edits. Like it's, it's not really interesting. So the more interesting example is like random graph. If we take a random graph, then obviously it has uh, expansion property. In fact, uh, uh, many like you know uh, properties in random graph. Like so, expanders are sometimes defined so that like you know some of the properties in random graphs are, are in your graph, and like you can you can use you know those properties. So for example, like this will uh, come to my talk again. I'll, that's why I'll briefly say. So in random graph, you can easily find a uh, easily embed a sparse graph. Like for example, you can easily in a random graph, let's say GN graph. So maybe I should define what, what random graph is. You so it's a lot of graph. Yes, okay. Eddie's Renai random graph. So Eddie's Renai random graph GNP is basically you start with n vertices and all possible n choose to edges you add independently with probability p. Okay, so that's how we define GNP. And let's say p is some constant, okay? Let's say p is half. So in g and half, you can easily find a safe path of length for, I mean, you can of course do way more than that, but you can easily like uh, embed such a thing, right? Uh, you can even get an induced copy of that. And you can do similar things in uh, expander as well. Like, you know, there are like this sparse graph embedding thing is basically works uh, like very similar. So one of the reasons sometimes people uh, in for combinatorial application, Look, people look at expanders because you don't have like this random graph behavior always, but like you still can have some of the random graph behaviors and having the properties of uh, expander uh, are many times enough. Okay, and uh, and the random graph for, uh, for the application of like you know computer science purposes, um, many times random graph is not good enough because like you you need some explicit con constructions sometimes and people do uh, some algebraic tool and some other things so i'm uh, not really a uh, like i'm not really like you know uh, an expert on these things but i'm pretty sure maybe many of you are familiar with such things so there are like you know such directions for uh under schedule let me now talk about some applications 
So uh, as I was saying, like yeah, you can do this uh, information theory uh, in information according theory. There's this construction of efficient error correcting codes. Probably this is just coding uh, uh, And then there is in computer science you have uh, randomness extraction clustering this type of uh, uh, this type of applications. So uh, from combinatorial uh, for combinatorial application, I will I will tell two things. So as I already briefly mentioned, so this first graph embeddings. This is one, and then there is the study of combinatorial map. So, of course, the, I, I'm not really specifying anything. This is pretty vague. Like, um, I mean, for example, you can we, like cycle is also like a candidate. Like, you know, we will be talking about, for example, embedding on the cycle. But like sparseness, there is no small cycle. Let's say, like, let's define it that way. Like, the gulf is big. Okay. So. You're just saying that the number of edges should not should only be linear in it or something or uh... sure again like there are like you know uh this is not not a single like you know thing uh, i'm just uh, like saying here yeah, like it's just like like it's just a thing here i'm sorry gnp will have lots of sort of, of course it does have but you can still have like i'm not talking about like embedding an induced uh supply like if it's induced yeah of course uh you cannot do in gnp Okay, so uh, for this sort of uh, sparse uh, graph embedding type problems, so for example, uh, let me maybe give one example. Uh, let's say, like, we talk about cycle, okay, and we know, let's say, in GNP, there is a cycle of linear length that exists. I mean, it's very easy to, there is Hamiltonian cycle when P is constant, but like, it's very easy to find a uh, cycle of linear length, right. And the same thing you can prove uh, for uh, expanders. Okay, in an expander, you can find a um, cycle of like you know almost linear lengths, like you know maybe some n over log n or something like that. Okay, but sometimes in applications, like your graph is not expander, right? Maybe it's close to expander. Okay, even if it's close to expander, still you will have like you know a like you no know, large cycle. So. So in, in many actually recent applications, like you know that some like you know long-standing problem has been resolved in this area recently. It it like it turned out that like you know you like like you have to prove some result about general graphs, and you go to like you know maybe two cases. In one case maybe there is a large expander subgraph, and then there you can maybe find uh, some like you can embed the graph, and in other case you do something else. Specifically, so it turns out that, like you know, being able to prove that your graph contains a large expander is also very powerful in in the like, sparse um, graph embedding type problem. Okay, so this is why, um, like many people actually in the literature raised this problem that part natural. Uh, conditions on the ensure existence of large expander circle. Okay. Um, so Maybe uh, in this context, I should also say so. This uh, Chigar constant, as I was talking about, so if you have a graph which looks like the following, let's say we have a like perfect expander graph, okay, like with good no, no, like no sparse cuts and all, and you have like you know some like small number of vertices outside, like you know, and uh, no, no edge in between, okay. So the number of vertices here is much larger than number of vertices here. So here actually the chigger constant is zero, as you can see, because 
this card doesn't have any edge but this you can view as like this is some sort of local noise right like you know maybe the like in some problems sometimes the adversary maybe remove some of the edges and the graph is graph has zero constant zero but still it's almost as good as expander graph for sparse embedding problems you can still embed like large cycles and all so we really wanted to investigate that like you know how to like you know uh, have some condition where like you can get a large you know expander but you won't get mixing time in this graph you don't get mixing time but like you know you can still get something so that's what i'm going to so for example uh, a very good point so if you notice in this graph uh, if you start a random walk from any vertex here then it mixes pretty well right so the problem is if you start a random walk from this part right so as you can expect like you know if you are if the random walk start from starting from most of the vertices is well mixing maybe then you can still get a good expander right so this is actually going to be the like you know main result i'll, I'll say so yeah the motivation comes from like you know this uh, this type of like you know example okay please feel free to ask any questions are there any natural examples of these almost expanded graphs with something which kind of seems natural mm -hmm. so there are actually like for example actually this study of combinatorial map which actually i'm not like you know an expert in but like here actually uh, so this is basically arises um, um in like you know if you try to build a map from like you know polygons by like you know joining like the edges and so on and there you like sometimes you get graph where there are like you know large like you know some trees but like then you have like some expander and like you know this type of uh, graph arises there and like uh, they are basically uh, you can then find like you know you can find like large expander basically in such graphs like in 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 this topic actually such graphs appear but like they, they are not like something like they are not worth like you know mentioning as interesting but it just appears in some like you know studies okay um, maybe then i will briefly talk about uh the random walk no sucks because that's what i'm going to talk in so for uh simplicity let's always talk about regular graphs okay most of the things i will be talking about goes through in like you know non regular graphs but still like you know you probably need some bound on uh, maximum degree minimum degree but like or maybe some of the vertices uh, that is not you know in some interval like for some of the degrees but let's just make like this gamma graph which is three regular on vertex set box n so whenever i write box n that is the set 1 2 or n okay this is pretty and then not this one and uh, so the random walk i consider is basically i mean suppose this is the graph you start with this vertex you just peak uniformly at random one of its neighbor you just go there and then from this vertex you do the same thing maybe you come back here and then you do the same thing and Uh, keep doing that. It's the standard uh, random walk. So let's define this notation, which I'll be using throughout the talk. So this Q B T, this is basically the distribution of random walk starting at P. So starting at B. So B is one of those vertex. After step P. obviously this q v0 is just v right start at so to say of the random walk you mean the final vertex of the random walk sure yeah yeah so this is this is the probability distribution right like you reach at 
some vertex with certain probability. It's not a distribution on walks. It's a distribution on vertices. It's a distribution on the vertices. Yes, it's a distribution on walks. Yeah. And walks are lazy or is it? No, it's it's the standard random walk. Like you don't do lazy. So from every vertex, you always move to one of the snap. So again, like these arguments probably like extend to lazy random walk as well. But we just choose to you know work on this framework. And when you mean q v zero equal to v, you mean it's like the in whatever elementary vector with one at the beginning. Exactly. It's just uh, so we actually abuse notation in the sense that we also sometimes say that uh, like this is like we we talk about like this type of things. Okay, let's so write this one. If this is clear. Okay. Uh, and uh, like to make sure uh, our limiting distribution of stationary distribution. So, okay, maybe before starting that, so if you have a regular graph, okay, let's just here's this vertex. Let's make it regular. This is a regular like four cycle. Then, like you know, if you do a random walk here for a long time, you can expect that after a long time, with probability close to one fourth, your random walk will be in this vertex, right? Because this is zero degree, so this is just two degrees, which is not much. This is my vertex. That's right. Right. Yeah. So, so that's why I was going to say. I was next going to say that. Okay, we assume that gamma is. Uh, connected and non vertex one on one vertex but yeah you you are absolutely correct so we assume that gamma fraction of the regular that's it and non vertex so when you have uh, connected and non bipartite graph then like uh, if you do the random walk and, and d regular that's um, obviously important then like with same probability uh, yeah, like the probability that you reach some vertex tends to one over n so, okay, maybe I will then just try. So, basically, this thing is Q T I J, this thing goes to 1 over n as T tends to infinity. Okay. So, let's now define this notion while well, mixing. These are standard, of course. And let's say this well mixing with respect to a parameter epsilon, which is like typically small, uh, but like you can just think of epsilon as something like one over 10 or something like that. So we say the random walk starting at V, starting at V, mixes well. If this thing happens, this total variation distance q t tau minus mixes well after time tau. This q t tau minus uniform distribution u is less than epsilon. So maybe let's just right. So this uniform distribution means like uh, all the vertexes has uh, wet one over n. Right, so this is the distribution of one over n. Dr. One over n. This is the stationary distribution or limiting distribution when gamma is connected and non. This is the one norm. Sorry, this is the one norm. This is the total variation distance. I will uh, define. So it's basically the L one norm basically. So this is um, this P one minus P two. Let's say these are two distributions on box n. So this is defined as the following uh, half summation this thing um, P1j minus P2j. So it's basically like you know, if you have the distribution like base and um, there's a base, uh, this there's a, the P1 and this is the P2, then this area is basically. Oh, okay. oh, we take the half. So basically, oh, this oh. plus this is same as that. Actually, yeah. Okay. I guess. Oh, okay. Uh, let's also say that. Uh, so you say uh, when mixing, okay, if this happens, we use this 
term that this vertex V is going to C. Okay. So when we say that, it means the random mouse starting from V is going to make C. Okay. And if and we also use on this that if all vertices in G is well mixing, then the graph is well mixing. Then we copy for G is well mixing. So, isn't there some tau in this definition? Because this is the upper time tau. Yeah, of course, there's like the tau epsilon carries from this, like it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's all that those parameters are still the same. Okay, I, this, this was mostly just uh, you know the notations. Let's now uh, briefly say okay, maybe uh, to say the, the classically known um, result. So this is a classical result. So what it says is small mixing time. So let's say mixing time of the graph G is in gamma. Let's say using gamma. So mixing time of gamma is basically uh, let's say minimum of P such that uh, this thing norm of Q G P uh, minus Q. This thing is the an epsilon for all minimum of p. So like this epsilon is like you know one fourth or something. Or okay. So this too is similar to this uh Seeger constant I just said, but like for one the other constant, this explicit result is uh uh, no, so this this is the conductance factor. Conductance. So minimum of like the subsets, and you take the number of edges between uh, A and the complementary. You take and then uh, divide by this factor, and it's known that. If, if you have good conductance, uh, like if you have more conductance, the mix So that is that is triggered. So that is one over lambda, and that triggers me for it. Yeah. Yeah. So why there are examples which which fit both sides. Okay, but trigger no, not not for the log and yeah. 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 Still yeah. almost going up. Yeah. So quadratic loss. Yeah. No, but for for fixed degree to start from vertex, the log is also becoming necessary. 
Okay, I guess uh, let's uh, yeah let's talk about it later. I guess and, and let's move on. I guess but yeah. Like these are some absolute constants. Okay, this is not like you can think of both of them as one over hundred. Okay, uh, so you have this Q V, and these are probably not like you know the best possible constants just for the convenience of proof. Okay, and it's probably not so important to like you know optimize those constants. Anyway, so we have this uh, this uh, uh, difference between Q V tau minus Q. Uh, this thing is less than delta. For at least epsilon n vertices v in box n, then there exists a subset v prime whose size is at most. Five delta n. Right? Again, this type constant is not important, such that uh, the induced graph on uh, let's say tau prime on this part, the remaining like box n minus this v prime, is basically you know expand that what you expect. So let me. Right again, uh, so satisfy actually expand that with some, uh, like you know, a bit weak property. So maybe it's better to write. So, this is for all x, for all x, uh, subset of this graph, v gamma prime, such that. Size of x is at most we have uh, all of these. We have this number of edges between x and v gamma prime minus x is at least epsilon v over 16 tau times size of x. So this tau is basically uh, the same tau. Okay, and again, I should probably say that uh, this still actually uh, doesn't give a uh, positive Chigar constant because of the dependence of tau, right? Because there is this uh, tau there, but this bound is actually uh, tied up to a multiplicative multiplicative factor of log tau. So I should probably say that. In a good expander, this tau is like you know some log n or like polylog n, right? So, so you can like tau definitely depends on n, like even in like you know, good expanders, but it's like polylog polylog n. So, 
Do this part in English for the bottom two lines. This part's the bottom two lines for all. Ah, oh, okay. Yeah, maybe. So, you mean these two lines, right? So, uh, maybe make uh, trying a picture might help. So, this deep line, we have this deep line, which is like, you know, the bad vertices, okay? Just let's remove it. And now, in the remaining graph, let's say we have this X and we have box n minus x and now for all possible such partitions the number of edges like this and size of x is at most this like at most the half of the number of vertices here okay so this is like this okay so this number of edges in between is at least this factor okay so remember positive chigar constant means you will have what like uh, this would be like you know some like degree times the number of vertices here, right? Is n minus six by two. N minus six by two. Where? Oh no, no, no. X is just the maximum. That's not it. Not gamma. Yeah, probably n minus six is also minus zero. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. That is what I meant. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you call an expander, you want to the downward. Let's just write this, basically this one is something less than half this thing. So almost spanning induced almost expanded. Sorry? Maybe we should say almost spanning. Almost induced, almost expanded Because I mean it's the it is one over the polylog uh, keyword. Well, I mean this expander is also not a term like you know where people globally agree. Like so, this this thing like there is this uh, term called like sublinear expander where like actually you have like such term in like and sometimes people just you know call them expander as well. So it's not a like, you know globally recognized. What's the sort of consequence you have on epsilon vectors? I mean, um, here is it like for every choice of epsilon yeah, and delta? Yeah, yeah. For every choice of epsilon and delta. Yes. So you fix like epsilon and delta, but they're small enough. But but in some sense, we want epsilon to be, I mean, we want to think of epsilon as being a large thing, right? Because we are basically saying that I want my graph such that it mixes well for many vertices. And no, no, no. So that's the point. So, yes, from the speculation, I was telling you before, like if uh, in your graph, from many of the vertices, uh, the random of mixes well, then you have a large expander. But it's even okay if you have a positive fraction of vertices from which uh, the random of mixes. It's on the left hand side of the implication. So having a small epsilon that is yes, a bit of a condition. Exactly. Yeah. So it's even a better result, okay. like you know, in, in that uh, yeah. 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 Why is there an upper bound on epsilon and the ah okay yeah so why does it stop at two? It actually no, that's a good point. That's only because that's for this for this for this yeah. Yeah. yeah like for this I think you here like then there would be some. You just put two or five over here into two fifty six then you get two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. Any other question? Because uh, after this, I'm going to like uh, mention an application to like you know some algorithm uh, site. So there is no question. I will move on. So okay, I, I was going to say it's actually I forgot to write. So it's like best part possible up to log tau multiplicative factor. Okay, and this. This comes from like you know some like sub uh, like what is it called like this uh, this graph on graph on two power t uh, the cube yeah the cube this this this, this uh, hypercube yeah exactly so this uh, comes from this hypercube and uh, yeah it's possible to maybe improve it by a log tau factor but that's uh, that we don't know so this is one direction of that equivalence the other direction is also so the other direction is more uh, clear because if you have a big expander subgraph, then of course from the classical result we know that there yeah, you have yeah. So it's it's kind of yeah, it's kind of straightforward. 
Okay, maybe moving to the application. Let me draw it. No, the other direction your hypothesis is going to be stronger no? because here your expansion expansion is sort of deep. It's not a constant. If you're only getting true, true, but like uh, those, they are the like the improvement. Oh wait, uh, it's a good point. Huh? So you need a stronger for the other direction. You need a. You don't have. This is not a definition of expansion. Expansion is a stronger. Okay. So. Uh, okay, uh, even in uh, like, even when we say like, you know, the equivalence like that, like there are like different quantitative uh, things in both sides, basically, like in that sense, like maybe it's not a, like maybe this statement directly doesn't imply this, but this definitely implies something which is like, maybe slightly to be careful. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, that's what I'm sure. Sorry, I just want to make sense. So, for any graph, uh, if your p is small enough, then can you say for sufficiently large p, it's expander, for sufficiently small p, it's not expander? Are there results like that at all? I mean, it's always expander. Uh, with p is decreasing with like n. Like p is at least like one of them. Like p is decreasing with n and all that, right? Uh, it, it's like in GNP, like when p is. At least one over n, then it's always mm -hmm. always expanded. No, I'm, I'm yeah. just wondering if there was a nice thing to be said. Okay, it's not expanded; it's almost expanded in this range. So, uh, so I mean, of course, if actually if, one over n, because mm -hmm. it will probably be still disconnected. But so like, yeah, 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 this. How, so how does it do? So, no, so that is fine. That's fine. You cannot do the convert. That's what all that's all. Yeah. You never discounted graph. So that's that's. I think that's what. No, discounted graph. How how would it serve? I mean, of course, if you have a discounted component like this, then that's okay. But yeah, so, 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 so basically, the point is possible to satisfy this condition <laughs> by. I mean, yeah, in such a graph. Yeah, 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 but in even in such a graph, you you start from your random of from any of the vertices here, it will be still well mixing, right? Because no, it's not well mixing. I mean, because that side might be like oh, but this definition of well mixing allows you to throw away epsilon. Oh, there, there, there. No, but the conclusion there, you are not doing the mixing time this. You are using the combinatorial definition of expansion. No? The conclusion. In the conclusion, yes, yes. So, so, so there, uh, why are we permitting a, a different subset? Where are we permitting it? Well, you're not saying that the sets are allowed. No, I mean, sure. Where are you saying it's always one? So, so that's because gamma prime is only on S prime. Right? But that's not this different is the small set right? which you are throwing. Yeah. It's the yeah. After throwing this part, you have like expand the possibility on this side. Like, so you are not saying that the, the induced graph is of this form. You are saying that the whole thing is of this form. Yes, yes, yes. Like this, this whole thing is. Yeah. So that's the follow up. So by well mixing, you mean that well mixing is some subset, right? Because as Theo mentioned, that you cannot be well mixing over there. Mm -hmm. right? No the reason it can because he is allowed to throw away some data. You know. But then you know, so, so, the well mixing no, no, the, so, so the particular so, 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 I haven't really talked about uh, like the relationship with separators or things like that, but like I guess many of you are familiar with it. So let me just draw this diagram. So this is equivalent to this linear many oil mixing vertices. And then there is this notion for vertex expansion. So it's basically the same. Here, what you do is for every like you know set, you have like enough number of you know vertex, which is adjacent to any of the, like one of the vertices outside of it, something like that. So and this is increase the part. Oh, should I increase the part? Okay, sorry. Sorry about that. So no small separator.
because we have like this direction doesn't hold, this direction holds, and this implies large. This most of these are like you know standardly known results, of course. The standard um, subgraph. You can like by passing through this part, you can easily get a large expander subgraph. But like we prove that this, if you go, you can go directly like this, and so that this is like you know, almost many in the sense I have already described. This is like a Picture. Yeah, so the other side, uh, as well as I just, just said, like, you know, you, you have. Then why can't you just take the whole graph? I'm sorry? So if that other side is true, then why can't you just take V? That V prime to be the whole V. V prime to be the whole V. So H is your room. Sure. Mm -hmm. Let's say it's expansion like in, in like with this, with this definition. Oh, oh. So, so, so this this approximately. I mean, edge expansion there there is all, so like so, so what is what is the difference between that edge expansion bubble and the large expander subgraph? Large expander subgraph. Sorry, so, so this is the large. This is this is what we mean. Okay, so okay. Also, this edge expansion there are like you know definitions where like you only. Like the only the large sets expand basically. Like in that sense, actually, this is maybe I should have stick with one notice and okay. Let me like I will happier if I just write okay, containment of is it so, 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 so is that bubble and the right the same large expander? Sorry, what? What's the difference between this large circle and the rightmost circle, large expander of graph? Oh, this you mean? Yeah. Um oh. So, uh, so this actually, uh, what I actually meant to say, uh, there's probably no difference. I think, I think so. So when you go from here to there, probably you this may not be spanning. So yeah, maybe you were right. Like this problem. Uh, yeah, this is the they are, uh, but like okay, when I said like this, exp, uh, this edge expansion, like I meant with this, with this. Okay. and the large expansion is not that yeah, exactly. Okay, then let me try to perform it. Yeah. Yeah. So, what does that double mean? Just expansion. expansion just means, like, you know, what I concluded with. Okay, let me just say that. So, that there is a. So, then it's the same as the right one. The same as the right one. No, the right one is not induced. Oh, yes, not. Do I have more time? I have more time. What goes into the truth of this? How to get this result? Truth of the statement from the classical result. So what are all the extra? So the extra is so okay. First of all, uh, this uh, this result uh, this result is not uh, really uh, as. Like I think that result is like you know way more like you know nurtured because like many people thought about it and like as I said like this is probably possible to improve it by log top factor or something and this result is more like uh, like in somewhere in the black box like some some argument like that is probably you like getting used like you know it's not like um, like it didn't show up in our proof really but like uh, it's. Like we are using like some sort of like you know expansion like when you have a good expander that it satisfies some property we are using certain things so maybe i will uh, uh so there are like two possible things i can now say like i can like maybe uh, sketch it like maybe give some steps how we prove it or like you know i i give some application to algorithms like i guess i can do only one of them. which one do you prefer i can do that to sketch you want no. <laughs> Okay, so uh, 
the idea is the following. Uh, so suppose uh, um, suppose like we have a graph which satisfies this um, first thing, then and we have like this x and uh, the remaining x and minus x. So again, in the proofs case, I'm going to uh, cheat a little bit. I will assume that this x is, uh, let's say, at least uh, like something like let's say some ten delta n or something like that. Like, uh, let's not say ten delta. Let's say four delta. Okay, which I can do because, like you know, in some sense, there are some like you know bad things which I'm allowed to throw. Like this is the whole graph. I haven't thrown anything uh, from the field. Okay. So what I want to do, we have this x and uh, box n minus x. Let's also write this in over two. Uh, and I want to show that the number of edges in between is like you know this. Okay, this is what I want to do. Okay, uh, so one of the uh, maybe a somewhat uh, uh, so it's somewhat like a uh, uh, um, like well-known result in graph theory is the following. Uh, if you have a graph G on box N with average degree B, then the number of K walks So k works is something like you have v1, v2, dot, 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 k plus one, and uh, like every consecutive vertices are adjacent. Number of k works in G is at least n times d power k. Okay. This is like some sort of pseudo type result. So uh, if, if if the graph is regular. Then it's exactly n times d power k, right? Because you have n possible starting vertices, and every time you have d choices, right? So you have, uh, so basically you can believe this, I guess, that if average degree is d, um, so it's actually uh, like in a very elementary way, it's possible to prove this for like you know infinitely many values of k actually. But anyway, I will just uh, take it there. Uh, Okay, so we have this result. Now let's come back to this picture. So what do we know? We know number of edges is actually kind of small here, right? So what does that mean? That means like the average degree in this part is kind of high, right? So that means if you start from a vertex here, let's moving the forward direction. Yeah, I'm I'm like yes, I'm just proving this direction because the other direction is like you know more or less clear. So I'm only this so just to understand, so how do you construct this at yeah. Um, so that part I'm I, I, I'm not really saying. So this P prime is like basically you do this argument, but like this argument gets stuck for some small part, and you just eliminate it. It's just some technicality, and and it's uh, of course needed <coughs> because of like examples like this. Uh, anyway, so. Now uh, let's say I have a vertex here, okay, which is uh, which is inside this set. This part, this at least epsilon and vertices, we have this good property, right? Like the if you start from this vertex, there are no more mixes with it, right? Let's say I have such a vertex here, okay. So what does it mean? That means after tau time, with reasonable probability, the random walk will go here, right? But uh, like this type of thing says basically. Like maybe not from here, but for many vertices here, actually, it's more likely that the random walk stays here actually after time time tau basically. So that type of contradiction we basically saw. Like I can give more details, but like on, on big picture, basically that's the idea. Okay. So what's what the big picture? picture idea? Okay. So the big picture is <laughs> this type of uh, this this result will imply so. If you have like many uh, tau length paths, starting from this vertex actually ends here, 
that means like so compared to the total number of tau length products starting from here then okay maybe let me write you saying that the intermediate crossing edge must be enough because the probability has to be sufficient so if you if you're staying inside then you don't have enough then you don't exactly that's that's the point so let's say this w tau means the total number of tau length paths which is totally inside here and let's say uh, w prime tau is the total number of tau length paths starting from this vertex in the entire graph if this ratio is actually big uh, like of course this has to be less than one right but if this ratio is let's say 1 minus epsilon then with let's use a different vector set okay so then that means with 1 minus epsilon prime probability after tau time this random one starting from this vertex will stay there in this part right mm -hmm. so and this you get from using some result like that but on the other hand you know that this vertex is a good vertex in the sense that random one starting from this vertex should go to this part with uh, like you know uh, half probability right like let's say uh, more than half probability because this part is bigger right so then like yeah you you get a contradiction like that basically in big picture and this actually needs to get from from the the average if the so if the number of layers in oxide is small the average will be less than the same way yeah uh, so basically you can like precisely this uh, so if if the if there is some x for which this fails then the average degree here is like at least like you can get something like this average degree let's say this is at least like maybe 1 minus epsilon over some like some constant times tau uh, let's say 16 tau probably not 16 let's say 8 okay, which one is um, yeah this like this is this is true so from here using this type of thing what you can actually say is you can actually say uh, the probability uh, okay let's I have, I have time maybe i can just say this part so let's define this p as the following probability uh, that an uniformly chosen uh, random vertex from x uh, the random walk actually the random walk from an uniformly chosen random vertex from x stays in x until step tau. Okay. So it then it's the end of step tau. Okay. You can even do that actually. That's okay. Like either, either, either way, I think it would be okay. So then from this type of thing, you using that tool, you can actually say this P is actually something like this, right? One minus epsilon eight tau to the power tau, right? Like I'm I'm using that number of paths is at least this, and the total number of paths, like this, this part will be like n times d power k uh, d power tau, and in this part you will have this extra factor basically, right? So like you cancel out basically when you divide, and this is basically something like like this, right? And for the other direction, what you do is so again like we can assume things like size of a uh, so. There are like you know this let's call these vertices good vertices this epsilon n vertices right so let's call these vertices the set of these vertices by i and let's assume like again i'm doing some cheating but like let's assume this is true okay because in one of the part you have many such vertices um then if this is the case like if this uniformly chosen random vertex actually hits one of this i it has good probability to post there and by doing some calculation and you can actually again contradict it. So yeah, that's like the rough idea. Yes. So the final conclusion is there are lots of edges going across. There are lots of edges going so, across. Uh, so suppose there were very few edges going across, uh -huh. then there's some contradiction related to the number of paths that is coming yes yes right then where did you where did you use the fact that i mean so so yeah this this uh this
So you were using this to get uh, to, to get this. Right? The expression is one hundred percent right. If the number if the number is going out, it's small. Then the ex is done. Sorry. So if this is small, then that means the average degree here is high, right? Because it's a irregular. So from using that, you are getting this number of bar, the number of blocks remaining inside of the block, and because each block appears the same property. So the problem. I'm a little confused. So it might just be the case that the set X that you have completely misses height. Oh, of course, it's possible. Then, like you do this type of argument for the other set, basically. Like, so, but it doesn't matter that you want X to be the smallest side. It matters a bit, but like it's okay. like some technicality can handle okay. those things. Basically. Like, yes, I, I absolutely agree with you, but yeah, I'm not showing the whole details. It has the safety guard of X not in the it is. Sorry, but well, it does the argument the smaller set x is not the smallest rather than four x. No, no, but it could. I mean, but the set of good vertices is only epsilon. Only epsilon and not. Yeah, there's no simulation in delta. No, no, right now they are both. It can be for all, for all. So, I mean, in principle, it could be the case that it's completely distant. Yeah, yeah, but I guess then you somehow proxy with the larger set. So, where does the deep frame come? Sorry, that's it. Okay, um, so yeah, again, like uh, this this thing I can actually argue when this size of x is actually big, so they are actually you have to do some adjustment. That's where it comes because this, like, when I uh, when I do the other side of uh, like you know, calculation that like you start from any vertex and you like you know, with high probability we go there. You would actually need such like you know lower bound as well. And they are basically yeah. To remove this, you need to throw out some vertices. Yeah, that's that's. Yeah. Oh, I found this classical a little bit counterintuitive. Why is it that if you have an average DD, you actually do better than uh, having constant degrees? I mean. Uh, this is okay. Let's uh, we can actually do some sort of Cauchy squares. Okay, uh, so let's say this is let's prove this for k equals to two. Okay, so for k equals to two, what happens? Like you, well, this is this is actually uh, yeah. So number of two walks will be how much? Uh, so if you do, wait, let me think for a bit. Uh, so you want to prove number of two walks is at least n times this square, right? It walks in the ground, but this is a high degree. I'd like you to be hit off it because your stationary distribution is proportional to this. So now if you're taking walks, the chances are that you're hitting vertices with a high degree, and so a skewed distribution is probably going to help you to generate more parts than the very uniform So you are going to say given the yeah I was going to say I said you I'm not yeah. Right, I think you can say the number of two works that is, is exactly yeah, exactly yeah that's that's the point. So d um, g square, right? Because you can count it like this, right? From this vertex, yes. or oh, this is just one transpose square one. Yeah. Right, right. And yeah. and then you just use for those first. And you can like keep iterating it. So actually, it's very easy to prove this when k is of the form two power something, like two power r. Then we just like iterate this argument to get this, and now uh, it's true for the general. Can you also say the average size k works? Average size k works. Oh, you mean like here the average degree d? Is that what you mean? We tell the classical with the with the k also, right? Number of k, 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 k,
Thanks, speaker. 